In this lesson, we'll take a look at the intersection of three planes, and in the first several pages note will uh, be dedicated to how three planes can exist together in three-dimensional space and share common points or not. And so the first, there's five cases here all together. Uh, in case number one, the three planes could be all parallel. And so pi one is the red one, pi two is the blue one, and pi three is the, uh, the bottom one. And if, there, if all three planes are parallel, then the three normal vectors are parallel, which means, of course, they're multiples of each other. Uh, examples of planes that could fit this description are these three here. So the normal vector for this would be 6, negative 15, negative 3. The normal vector for the blue one would be 2, negative 5, negative 1. And for the green one on the bottom would be 4, negative 10, negative 2. And so notice that they are multiples of one another. The green one is twice the blue one, and the red one is three times the blue one. Now, notice that the constants on the end are not in the same multiples as the normal vectors themselves, and so that's why they're parallel and distinct. Uh, they share no common points. Uh, if, for example, this con now notice, remember the green normal is twice the blue one as we have a negative 1 there. So if this had been negative 2, then they would actually be the same plane. And so uh, this normal is 3 times this normal, so if that had been negative 3, again, those would have been the same plane. And another example of par three parallel and distinct planes are in most normal rooms. The floor, the surface of a table in the room, and the ceiling would be an example of three parallel planes that do not share any common points. There's no point that's on all of them. So that's the first way the three planes could be parallel and distinct. Case number two, we could have two parallel planes and one of them intersecting through. Of course, that's not parallel to them. An example of these types of planes equations would be, uh, notice that 6, negative 15, negative 3. The normal for that is, uh, normal one is 6, negative 15, negative 3. For the green one, it's 4, negative 10, negative 2. And for the blue one, and notice that these are multiples. If I multiply normal 2 by 1.5, I get normal number 1. And so that's why these are parallel. Uh, again, uh, the 9 and the negative 4 are not in the same multiple as the normal vectors are. So these two planes, the red and green ones, would be parallel. Now normal number 3 for pi 3 would be 5, 4, negative 8, and it's not a multiple of these two, and so that's why somewhere that would have to cut through and intersect in each of these planes in parallel lines. So pi 3 intersects pi 1 and pi 2 in two parallel lines. Again, there, again uh, like the first example, there's no point that's in all three lines or sorry, planes. Uh, there are points that the blue plane and the red plane share, and of course that would be on that line of intersection there. And there are points that the green and blue plane share, and that would be on that line. But there's no point that's on all three of the planes. Case number three, the planes could intersect in pairs of parallel lines. So for example, it might look like this. So here's the pairs of parallel lines. This one is the one that the red and blue planes, pi 1 and pi 3, intersect in. Uh, this line here is the line that the red plane and the green one intersect in, and this line is the line that the blue plane and the green plane intersect in. And here's an example of these kinds of planes. Now, notice the normal vectors are not multiples of one another. Okay, uh, but there is another a, a, a special thing here. Uh, if this is the case that they intersect in three. Uh, parallel lines. So it's kind of like the intersection in the middle here, or it's not really the intersection, but in the middle here there's an infinitely long triangular prism. Three-dimensional, of course. Uh, if, that, if this is the case, then one of the normals can be written as a linear combination of the other two. So for example, this normal here is twice this normal plus this one. So if we multiply this normal by 2 and add it to this normal, we actually get this one. And so that's the situation if you have these three pairs of parallel lines that they intersect in. Now, um, in, in this case, if we are actually were to draw the normal vectors, normal, like this normal would come out of this plane, like this. And this normal would actually come out of this plane, like this. And then we'd have 
this normal coming out of this plane like this. Now you might look at them right away and say, Ooh, they're certainly not parallel, but they actually are. If you, if you thought of a plane uh, parallel to like the screen here, this cutting through uh, sort of parallel to, to where you're looking, uh, those vectors actually would all lie on that plane. And so they're said to be coplanar. Um, if they're all, uh, if all the vectors are going in the same direction, like in case one and case two, you know, if we had one normal like this and another one just longer like this, then it's easy to say that that they're parallel. They're also coplanar. Those two vectors I just drew are like if you think of the screen that you're looking at as a plane, they all lie in the same plane, as do those three vectors that I just drew for pi one, pi two, and pi three. And I'll, I'll be talking about that a little later in the note, how those vectors actually are coplanar. They all exist in the same plane. Now, case one, case two, and case three are all said to be inconsistent, since the three planes have no common points whatsoever. Okay, so they're all inconsistent. There's no points that are on all three of the planes. Case number four, the planes could intersect in a line. This is very similar to when you have two planes uh, intersecting a line. If they're not parallel planes, they intersect in a line somewhere. But you could have a third plane that also comes through and intersects in the same line. Uh, now, this is kind of like case number three. If we go back to case number three for a moment, um, it's actually like this one, but if these three lines collapse to the same line, it's, that's really what we have here. And so remember in this case the normal one of the normals was linear combination of the other two. Well we go back to this one. That's true of the normals here but it's actually true of the constants as well. The whole pi 3 planes equation is actually twice the first one plus the the, uh, the second one. And so if that's true if you see that oh look at this this equation it's that one plus that one or it's you know three times one plane plus four times another and then that's in that case if you happen to notice that then you have a line of intersection there's another way to tell that's kind of kind of random uh, but there's another way to tell that uh, that this actually may have occurred so this is called a consistent system of equations because there are points that are on all the planes and of course any point on this line is shared by all the planes so the solution to this, and we'll actually take a look at one later on, is the equation of a line. So if you're asked to solve the system of equations right here, the answer, the solution, would be the equation of that line of intersection. Last example, the planes might intersect in a single point. So, um, so here's an example of three planes. Now, the normals are all non-parallel. I've drawn the normals for this one. They're certainly not parallel. And this is called a consistent, well, when we write the equations, it would be called a consistent uh, system of equations because there is a, an answer, a point that's on all the planes. And that, would, of course, would be the point right there. Now, there is a test for this. And this is called, this is a, a triple scalar product. Uh, take it to the three normals, take the cross product of two of them, and the dot product of that with the third one. And if that's any non zero value, any non zero value, then there is a unique point of intersection. And remember, what if you remember from previous studies with vectors, that triple scalar product uh, gives the volume of the uh, three dimensional object formed by those three vectors. And uh, if there is a volume, if the volume isn't zero, that means that there has to be a unique point of intersection because those vectors are not falling all in the same plane and they're certainly not parallel. Uh, summary on uh, this page. So if n1, n2, and n3 represent the normal vectors for three distinct planes, find the triple scalar product. Now the triple scalar product is non-zero, any non-zero vectors, then the normal vectors are not coplanar. They don't all lie in the same plane and they're certainly not parallel. So there, then there has to be a single point of intersection as per the diagram on the previous page. If that does give you zero, that means that triple scalar product, the normal vectors are coplanar. And in that case, there may or may not be points of intersection. If there are points of intersection, then it's a line of intersection. And we'll take a look at that in an example. Now, it doesn't matter which triple scalar product you take, n2 cross n3 first, or n1 cross n3 first, or n1 cross n2 and then dot with n3. It doesn't matter which you, you, you do.